that's my business. What's your business? Termar. You can see the sign yeah, in the background. It is. And today, that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're touring his business. His business. We're the business. Two, yes. We're the two brothers. We're going to do some shop tours. We're going to do Tyler's first. So take us around. We're the Lean Brothers. Let's go. All right. Welcome to Tremart. I'm excited to start our channel off by showing you a little bit about who we are and what we do. We'll take a quick shop tour and then over the next uh, number of months and years, we're going to have some fun. So anyway, this is, this is uh, our lobby where we start things when people come in. Who made that sign? That was made by uh, the print shop, Pulse Printing. So yeah, Darren's made most of that, most of our signs, our shirts. I'm wearing a shirt that he made. But in here, down the hall, we have a couple of nice restrooms for our people and our, um, our server room. We have seven offices as you look through here um, where our different people uh, sit we have drafters engineers designers project managers so they sit in here as well as down here um, we're putting in a new showroom in here it's kind of a design center so that is is coming soon we'll come down this way and you guys get to see our break room so we love our people so we've put a lot of time and energy into making a nice break room uh, Everything here is always a work in pro progress. We want to make sure uh, that we're improving every day because if you're not improving, you're falling behind. That's what we say. So anyway, this is our break room. So um, we've, we've got soda for the guys. We actually provide breakfast and lunch. Um, we're just trying to make it a great environment for people so that they want to be here, that they want to work here. Why do you have so many microwaves? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, some people think we need a lot of microwaves. So I think we're, we might be a little overkill. Well, don't all your guys take lunch at the same time? They do. All the guys do take lunch at the same time. So there have been times where we've had, you know, three or four microwaves running at the same time. So it is nice to have. And then you have games. Games. Ping pong still our most popular. Air hockey. It's a workbench right now. Uh, pool, shuffleboard, darts. People love darts. So, so, uh, the video, we are Lean Brothers. Do you have a morning stand-up meeting? Does that happen here? There's a TV. There's TVs throughout the shop. Do you do that? Are you working towards that? Do we some do. people do it? So we have meetings uh, four out of five days a week. Fridays, we work four tens and a half a day on Friday. So um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, we have a meeting with the office and with all of our leads uh, in our shop. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have the entire uh, shop. We meet together. We talk about improvements. We do trainings, things like that. So it's a little bit of a hybrid morning meeting, if you will. But we do do it four out of the five days a week. Sweet. And this is where we this is where we have the shop meetings. Yep. Well, let's go look at the shop. All right. All right. Before we continue with the tour, why don't you explain what it is you guys do here? Okay, so at Trimart, we are a residential and commercial casework company. So we provide cabinets for houses, kitchens, bathrooms, laundry rooms, entertainment centers, you know, anything kind of specialty woodworking in the home as well. We also, we diversify. So we try and, and make part of our business that residential side and part of what we do commercial, which would be schools, hospitals, you know, high-end condominiums. Um, we've done fire stations, things like that. So Anyway, so we're a cabinet shop, essentially. So, uh, And that's, as you see back here, as we start our shop tour, here at Trimart, we, we do a lot of automation. Um, we like automation because we're able to hire really good people that love to work with this equipment, and we can control what's going on. So this is our store tech machine. And inside of this, you can see there are thousands of sheets, actually, inside of this small gated area. Each of these sheets are cataloged by the computer system and the arm over here will actually pick those sheets up and those sheets, it'll grab the sheet it needs and put it on the CNC routers that are over on the other side. So you'll be able to see them so this here is shortly. The arm and this is the feed, right? Correct. So it'll pick up a sheet and it will either drop it on this or this one, right? Correct. Yep. And then we have one other section that'll pull it out to some machines that aren't 
uh, in the store itself. So, so yeah, this is our inventory system that helps us to keep track of inventory. It helps us get inventory of the machines fast and it gets consistency to everything. So, um, so why, to me, this seems like a lot of wood, is it like, so we can burn through, um, a lot of times 150 to 200 sheets a day. Um, some of the wood is in here because we have to pre-buy when we order for big projects, we have to get it in um, just as part of the requirement. Um, and part of it's in here because we use a variety of woods. Um, but we'll, you know, all this inventory, this is probably um, maybe a month's worth of inventory. So is every piece of wood in a stack the same? It is not. So this machine actually will do what's called a rainbow stack. So you'll see some of them have the exact same material in them. Other stacks actually are random. They'll have, you know, they could have every single sheet could be different if you want, you know, and with three quarter sheets, we can stack over a hundred sheets per stack. So. So yeah, we've, we've definitely got a lot of inventory in here. And then what are these? So over here, these are the dust collectors. So each of these are tied to multiple machines to get rid of all of our dust. So that's what the ducting is for? Yep. Ducting goes to all the different machines. There's multiple ports on each machine, and it keeps our environment clean. Well, let's go see those machines. Let's do it. So these are the machines we were over there by those dust collectors. So now we're across here. What is this area? What are the machines that are here? So these are the three stooges. This is Larry, that's Curly, and that's Mo. So these are CNC routers. So all the wood you know, comes out of the store. It goes on these routers. It cuts them, it bores them, it drills them, uh, does all the different operations. So, so these parts were made on the CNC? They were, yep. All these were made this morning, actually. And we had a very limited crew it's actually technically a holiday today so that's why you actually see more piles of stuff we really try and run things pretty lean that's the whole point of this right but the purpose of lean is also continuous improvement that's really what we consider lean so we try every day uh, are we a lean company you know i would say no we have a lot to work on but do we practice lean yes we do continually improve every day and so we try and keep our whip which is work in process to a minimum so you don't see a lot of parts around here. We had one guy here, that's why you even see these carts right here today. But yeah, each of these machines, they'll be spitting off things on each of the conveyors. You can see we have label systems that all the parts get labeled right at the table. And then once they're labeled, uh, they're barcoded, numbered, things like that. And then they, they come off and go down to some other machines that are down here. So the machine straight ahead over there, that's called the edge bander. That puts the edging on all of our cabinet parts. So everything flows down there on these carts that we have. Uh, we found these for a super good deal on Global Industrial and they've been amazing. So we send those down to our edge bander. So they come off here. I'm assuming there's a step here before they go there. Correct, so this is another computer controlled machine. Uh, parts that need to be drilled on the edges go into this machine. Uh, this is called a drill and dowel machine. So. It'll drill the end, it'll pop a dowel in the end if it needs it, and then, then they can go down from there. So, And this is controlled by barcodes. So our parts that have barcodes. So basically, that. if the part comes off the machine here, it gets labeled, if it has a barcode on it, then it can come over here and be scanned by the barcode scanner so that it automatically knows where to put the holes. Correct. Okay, and then I see a few other machines between the dowel machine and the edge bander. So what, like, what are these other processes? So this, this middle section between the two is actually for our painted doors. So the, these piles of doors that you see over here right now, they haven't been processed through again, cause we only had one person here today, but this uh, first unique machine is called a shape and sand. So it actually uh, sands and finishes the edges on, uh, on the doors down here. We actually hinge bore uh, for all of our hinging on our parts. So it goes through here. And then we have where all these lights are right now. This is a sanding station. So they'll grab the doors, do a quick hand sand on them and make sure they look, look good. 
So basically this sands the edges, this puts the hole to accept the hinge, and then manual sanding here. Correct. We try and have everything that we need out. Um, one of the things you'll find that we're starting to do is we're starting to get rid of toolboxes. We're starting to get rid of drawers and, and starting to get everything out so that we can see it. We know if it's there and we know if we're missing. So you got a lot of this pegboard stuff around. Looks like these are 3D printed holsters for different tools. They are. So these are routers. They're two different routers. So they're both routers. I'm assuming they have different bits. They do. So I'm guessing you have dozens of routers throughout the shop. We do. One of the things we found is it's, you know, one of the wastes, you know, is, is changing tools out. So it takes a lot of time. If we were going back and forth, changing to those two different bits, you're talking, you know, three or four or five minutes by the time you do it. So we found it's way cheaper just to have a second router. You just grab the one you need, use it, put it back. You're not having to do changeovers. So it kind of comes through this process, and then this is the edge bander. Explain to those that don't know what that does. <laughs> sure. So if you look at a if you look at a cabinet part, we'll look at these cabinets that are here that, that actually hold the banding. So uh, on the edge of this, you see that this is a nice nice finished edge. Uh, this one's obviously so finished that's white. Finished, and this one's not. If you look at this, this doesn't have an edge. So usually it's a part of the board, an MDF, whatever the core is. So we take the edge bander, the edge bander puts this edge on them. So this is a really expensive machine to do it. They have cheaper ones. Why? Different features. So this machine is a little more universal. It has a lot of, a lot of features. Like you can put different thicknesses of edge banding in it and it'll do roundovers, different things. It's very automated. So everything's controlled by a program. So you just go on the screen, type the program you want in it, and it'll come out done. Uh, less expensive edge banders uh, can still do a great job, but there's a lot more manual um, tweaking, manual controls. You have to know more what you're doing uh, at each station inside the machine where this one is pretty automated. And so this one, you feed it in here, it goes down there, and then it returns itself? It does. Yep, it's got a return conveyor. This, this banner is super long. It's really fast, but you can have, I mean, at any one given time, depending on how big the parts are, you can have from five to 10 parts just inside the machine at any given time. And it feeds uh, 25 meters a minute. So that's roughly, you know, 75, 80 feet a minute. And so you can imagine how fast parts can come. So we have them come back, kick back, so that operator can run it by himself instead of having to have multiple people. That's one thing that we do. We, we always look at equipment, um, what, what's the labor equivalent of equipment? That's kind of how we look at that. So when we first bought this edge bander, it was all by itself without a return conveyor. And it took two to three people to run it. And now we can run it with a single person by adding that return conveyor. And so that return conveyor, I don't remember the exact price of it, but it basically was the equivalent of, of one person's salary for a year. And so we, you know, looked at that and said, yeah, that's, that's a quick payoff one year. So, so it's made sense. So this looks like another boring machine. It is. So the other one is not very far away. Why, why do you have another one? So first we want redundancy because we do a lot. And so if a machine goes down, uh, we've never had a machine go down for very long, but if a machine goes down, if we couldn't bore our edges it would literally stop production. So that's the number one reason, redundancy. But number two is we pair it with this other CNC. Um, this is called a vertical CNC, so we can do drawer parts. We can do a lot of things through this. And by pairing these two, we get a, a whole nother work cell. And so that's that's kind of why we have, have two drill and dowel machines. So you have three vertical. Three horizontal Three CNCs, horizontal. And, and then one, one vertical. vertical, correct. And then you were saying earlier, this is the third output station for this. This doesn't look official. This doesn't look like an official output station. Well, one of the things that uh, Paul Akers in Lean says is use your head, not your wallet. And so um, we, we created a station knowing how the machine worked. Uh, we created a station that would 
would drop and we could pull material out to go to this CNC that is not integrated into the store system. And so that was something that, that we just, we figured out how to do because we used to offload things on clear on the other side over there. We would grab them with a forklift, we would bring it over here and it would make it a lot harder. We had to keep our, uh, our production area a lot more open, a lot more wasted space. So now we can tighten it up. Cool. Well, let's go to the next machine. Cool. All right. So we're just down the aisle. We were standing over there. This looks like another edge bander. So redundancy. Correct. And what's the other reason why? <laughs> so yeah, obviously the first reason is redundancy, but the second reason is because if we're running production on the one and we need to do custom things on the other, then we don't have to stop what we're doing. So the big banner is really our production bander, the small one. We have guys that build small things, hoods and mantles, floating shelves, things like that. They need stuff edge banded. And so they can come over here and they can use this machine and not affect anything in production. So in essence, if something out of the norm needs to be done, you have another one, but then you also have redundancy at the same time. Correct. It's a little bit smaller, so I'm assuming less features, less speed. Definitely. It's things way, like that. It's way slower. Um, it's, it's more manual. It, it's still decently automated, but it'll only do a couple of thicknesses with its automation. We can put different thicknesses of edge banding on, but not necessarily round them over the way we would want to. So, so some of that stuff we, you know, we can't do, but it's nice. On next week, I've got my technician scheduled to do uh, really a tune-up on the big bander and some of the, the routine maintenance that needs to be done. So that day we'll be running the small bander for production. And it just gives us the chance to, to do some of those kinds of things. And our maintenance tech can, can do that during the day instead of having to schedule nights or weekends to do that as well. And then it also has the auto return. It does, yep. And, and I apologize, it's a little messy right now. Like I said, if you're not improving, you're falling behind. So yesterday we started moving some things. We moved this dust collector right here. It's a temporary location. We're actually moving our assembly area here. So those cabinet parts come off of the production line that they'll come down, they'll, they'll wrap around on a production roller and they'll be assembled straight off the machines. Where we used to, you see the pallets of stuff sitting around. We used to palletize everything and take them to a different area which we'll show you in a minute. That's quite a mess right now as we're moving things. But again, we're trying to improve constantly. So, so you're trying to go to a one piece flow. Correct. So we got this dust collector here. You got what seems like five or six dust collectors throughout the shop. We do. We have five. And then there's one more piece of equipment hiding back here. So what's this one? So this is called a, a panel saw or a beam saw. So, this really, in essence, is, is what I would consider a really safe table saw, if you will. It pulls the material into itself, and then it's got safety features so you can't get... Can I stand on this? Yeah. So you can't get hands caught in it, things like that. So it's safe. This only does squares. It won't do angles like you can on a regular table saw. But, but yeah, we cut a lot of parts on this saw. You can stack sheets too high if you need to. So you can stack sheets and program it so it'll automatically cut whatever dimension you program. Correct. We cut a lot of our drawer parts on this saw. That's what this is. Someone's drawer parts are going to have my footprints on it. I'll send you the bill. Okay. So this, I would almost consider this half of the shop. So we have kind of this dividing wall. You bought this building and have adjusted it to fit your needs, so to speak. Correct. So this is part of the tour that we've gone through. And it's to me, it seems like it flows pretty well. Pretty well. You have material that comes in. You take the material, you manufacture it on these pieces. And then these pieces then feed off into what I'm assuming is paint and production. Well... I'm assuming, right, I know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm correct. pretending to be you people who don't know anything about this, but it moves off into assembly and paint. Um, is there anything else specific about this 
area of the workshop that you think would be interesting for people to know or understand? Or I guess another question, like how big is this building? So the total square footage of the building is 27,000 square feet. So what we're standing in, which I kind of consider the mill, but again, we're bringing assembly into the mill, is about 10,000 square feet of the building. The offices are about four to 5,000 square feet. Uh, and then the rest of the, where we have our paint and customs area and really what will end up being storage that used to be assembly is the other, you know, remaining, you know, kind of 11, 12,000 square feet. All right, well, let's go to assembly or what is currently assembly. So it's a messy area right now because it's in transition. It is. We're in transition. We're trying to figure out one of the things, true lean, I guess, wouldn't have a buffer. But if any of you have ever read the book, The Goal, that's a great book that talks about buffers and, and trying to keep flow. And so we, we do carry a buffer with our painted parts. Uh, and that's kind of what we've put over here in assembly at the moment. Um, but we haven't uh, got a spot actually placed for it yet. So we're working on that right now. Like you say, we started moving things around yesterday and now we're we're kind of in a little bit of a mess, but it's gonna be exciting to see the transition as we go. So, so the first piece of equipment I see is this. What's so yeah, this Y belt sander. Um, we don't use it a ton. We order a lot of our hardwood stuff out, um, but we have that for when we need to, you know, just need to sand some hardwood, uh, need to make it a little bit nicer. So um, again, doesn't get used a ton, but a little bit. So a giant sander. Giant sander. So over here, this first kind of area on this side is actually our customs area. This is where we build, you know, anything, hoods, mantles, floating shelves. We'll build uh, die walls, reception desks for schools, things like that. So that all kind of gets built over in this area. So this area is a little bit, uh, it, it's got to have a lot of kind of specialty equipment. It's got a lot of specialty little custom tools. Um, we've got things like the Fez tool domino. We've got, this is actually a miter fold machine. So we do a lot of miter folding. This has been an amazing piece of equipment to help us with that. So you can see, you know, even these legs, you know, if you look on the edge of these right here, you can see these have all been folded together and, and taped up. So that's done with this circle T lock miter machine. So, uh, Caleb and Jordan, who are in our customs area, they are very, very lean thinkers. Uh, they always, one of the things with lean is a place for everything and everything in its place. And so that's what they do. They're always coming up with ways to make things better, to be able to find things easier so that they are not searching and, and having that waste of moving around all the, all the time to try and find things. So. More, more routers. We do, we have more routers and they all have different bits in them. And there's a box for routers. There is, so that's kind of our random box that, you know, the, the parts that we're using just once or twice a year. So we keep those, those up high, everything else. One of the things that's gonna happen soon is, is Caleb said, I wanna get rid of the toolbox. So that toolbox will be disappearing here over the next couple of weeks and we'll be making some new brackets for our wall. Never have too many clamps. It's true. Okay, so we just finished customs in this area, then what are we moving to next? Okay, so this is kind of where our storage starts. On this side, we have what's called our customs buffer. So the customs buffer is really once we cut parts on the machinery over there, we bring them over here, and then these guys will process through them. So we gotta have a little buffer, because uh, sometimes we the speed isn't the same. Really, the point of a buffer is is to help kind of level load everything. So anyway, customs gets a buffer because sometimes it takes them longer to do things and sometimes they're quicker than the rest of the process. So we keep a buffer there for them. This is a storage. This is a work in process. We, we put these racks here a month or so ago. We're starting to get them organized and labeled uh, very slowly. But, uh, but again, you got to improve just a little bit at a time, just a teeny bit at a time. Um, we love two second lean by Paul Akers making in incremental improvements every day. So as you look over here, so this is what's called a case clamp uh, over here. This is for when you dowel a cabinet together, then this will actually come down. It'll put pressure on your cabinet, clamping it together. This will get moved over there 
over the next couple of weeks. So this machine is so, moving to the new area. The new assembly area. For the assembly. Yep, that we're working on. So, and as you come over here, you'll see one of the things that we, that we found, we used to do a lot of paperwork. We don't like paperwork because it gets lost. It's not lean. We want our guys to be able to know what to do and when to do them. So we've got screens in a couple locations. There's more coming, um, but these guys, some of the organization over here will be transferring over there. We'll be improving upon it, um, but everything is, you know, is all digital. So we can put it straight from the office out here. This is uh, the assembly bench. This will be moving over there. Um, this is a little more organized than you saw over there currently. So we have places for different screws and bits and things like that, drawer slides. Um, this was really packed the other day until we moved some of them to the other side, but this bench will actually be moving uh, over on the other side here next week. So, so with the screens, is it controlled by like the computer that next is next to the screen that I see here, or do you have like a central control? How are the screens, or how will they? I yeah, guess? so the screen's controlled by the computer in the workstation. So, um, so yeah, that that's linked to that, and they pull straight up that. We use a software called Asana, um, project management software to run our facility. Asana's been amazing. So we use that. I know at your print shop, you use monday.com. We use Asana, they're very similar. They both have their pros and their cons, uh, but that's what we we're using. So they can pull up Asana on a web browser and they can get things. Our installers out in the field can pull up Asana on their phones and get all the information. So we keep things so that we can find them uh, anywhere we are, so. So this is assembly. There's a few other machines over in this corner. What yep. are those for? So over here, this is where we, in the in the corner corner, this is where we make our, our drawer boxes, our dovetail drawer boxes. Um, we have a temporary machine in here because we had a spindle go out in our uh, CNC dovetail machine. So we've got this little green machine right here. That's a temporary machine. So basically we cut our parts on this uh, miter saw right here, dovetail them, clamp them, notch them, sand them, and then uh, that gets us through the process. We also do speakers for a high-end audio company. Um, that's some of these right here. We may share that a little bit down the road, some of the things that we do for them. So, but yeah, that's kind of the shop. And let's go over to the hardware area. Well, we missed a few pieces over here in the middle. Oh, all right. We can talk about those. We got we to gotta get every piece. I don't want anyone to be bored. Hopefully they're not. But so... Here, this is kind of our little shaper uh, corner. We have a couple of shapers. It's called a pocket machine for doing angle screws in the side of, of pieces. Then we have a bandsaw. Um, these aren't constantly used, but they're fantastic pieces of equipment when you need them. Uh, in the middle here, we have a saw stop. The technology on these things is amazing uh, and the peace of mind it gives you. So the blade will actually drop out. If your finger was to touch that blade while it's running, the blade will drop out. Do we have experience in the shop of why that is necessary? There has been a couple of experiences, and yes, I, I believe it has saved fingers here uh, as well as all over the world. Then we have a planer and a joiner. Uh, we get, use those when we do some hardwood things. Uh, and then this is called an Altendorf table saw. This is a sliding table saw. These saws are amazing. We only allow a few people to use this saw because it is you have to be trained on it because it can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. It looks like there are no authorized users. Currently, there's no authorized users. We erased what was on there. We're doing new training on it for those who can use it. So, yeah, there's only uh, about five or six people that are allowed to use that saw. How, how come your, your hand is missing his fingers? Because this thing's pretty dangerous. You can take them off if you're not careful. That's this why is, you have to be trained. This is the machine I actually like. Um, so I, you let me use it to cut down my core plast and it is super straight. Like it is, it is perfect. It's so. a fantastic machine. Well, let's go One of my to favorites. your, what do you call it? The store supply? Our hardware area. Yeah. Hardware. Let's go to hardware. Wave to the camera. So this is our hardware area. We decided to utilize an area that always was stacked with junk. We made cabinets for it. Um, we're slowly con bonding things as we go in here. So you'll see all of our different screws. Um, we have, we use a lot of different sizes of screws. Then over here, we'll actually have, this is some custom hinging, you know, custom things that we don't use a ton of, but we use enough of that we need to keep some in stock to find them. So you'll find, 
Um, yeah, custom size hinge plates, Kanban cards for, for things. Um, we've got custom hinges, shelf pins, spacers, different things like that. So what will happen is uh, our guys, when they, they have places in their area where they're actually building, that they keep some of this stuff that we need. Um, and so they'll come over and refill um, their bins and then take them to their area. And this is the place where we keep our stock and keep it Kanban. So they can come use it. Then when they use, you know, use up our stock, then they'll, they'll take the Kanban card and our purchaser will order them. Over here, this is really where we keep our handles and knobs and some of the specialty hardware uh, that are job specific. So we have different knobs and handles that we use a lot of. We don't Kanban those. He just... If we get extra inventory, we keep track of that. And then on this side, this is actually job specific. So they're actually labeled for jobs that are going out. So um, each of these, these boxes will be going to a specific job here shortly. So um, handles and hardware have been really hard over the last year and a half. So we order them with a lot more time where we used to just, we'd order them just days before the jobs would go out. Now, a lot of times we'll actually put in the PO. Uh, sometimes we'll get POs three or four months before the cabinets will go in and we'll order them right when we get the PO because of some of the supply chain issues with, with hardware. So that's why that's there. So one of the other awesome things, um, this is a fasten all vending machine. This has been absolutely incredible. Um, these guys for a very minimal fee, I think it's, uh, $40 a month, then they'll actually get you these vending machines. These vending machines, we own all the inventory in them and it's computerized. It really is an automated Kanban system, I consider it. So these are things that we use constantly. We, our guys have codes, so we know who takes things. So they can come and punch their code, tell the machine what they want, and then it'll spit those items out. And then Fastenal gets an email and once a week they come in and they uh, restock the vending machine so then we never run out of these items so this has been this has been a game changer for us so because it's automated if you show us how it works will that ruin your inventory no i can we can open up something so um yeah if i type in my code and hit enter and then it's gonna say okay what do i want so let's just say i want to get some of this tape so i type in 80 hit enter it's going to open. I can pull out. There's a little bit of the honor system here, but anyway, I can pull out. Let's say I pull this four rolls out, shut it. Then the machine's going to ask me what I took. I'm going to put zero. So it's going to do that. If I did, if I did take something out of this, it would vent it out just like a candy machine or a soda machine. And then I'd have to do something with it. But yeah, we put things in. We use a lot of Sharpies. Can I get one? Um, you want a Sharpie? Sure. Okay. I'll give you one. Here, we'll, we'll hide your code. Okay. okay. Yeah, we wouldn't want anyone. <laughs> so. Oh. There you go. Sweet. So, yeah, it's great because a lot of those things that you need, I mean, we have batteries in it, drill bits, um, spackle. There's a lot of paint supplies in here, uh, respirators, safety glasses. So we're able to keep that stuff uh, in here and just get it restocked when we need it. So super nice. My favorite product is the 2P10. I love that 2P10 stuff. 2P10 is amazing. So what makes you decide whether to have it in the vending machine or in just your inventory? Like so again, it's always a work in process. So when we originally put the vending machines in, we just looked at some of the products that we're using a lot of, and and that's what we started with. We've we've changed. We you know we we've taken some things out. We've replaced it with other things. And but they'll do what I like is you know let's say stir sticks for example. Like they do a service that they'll put twenty five stir sticks in a pack, so we can just grab a pack, take it to our our work area. So just the way they service, that's kind of why we decide. A lot of the stuff we have in here is, is for paint, like I said, um, but cleaners, different things. And so, yeah, we just kind of started with uh, with some products that we use a lot of, and that's that's how we chose to do it. So I guess the only other thing in this area is upstairs. Is that just more storage? 
it is more storage. That's kind of a a work in that's, progress. That's the area we put things that we don't know what to do with it at the, at the moment. So, and we can't. There, there's value in them, although we throw a lot of things away. Um, but we we're just trying to decide and figure out what and what where we want to put some of those things, or if we want to get rid of them. So, over here, there's just more hardware that we use quite often, or job specific stuff. So. Again, this hasn't really been labeled yet, but it, it's going to be shortly. So the last part is the paint shop. Let's go into the paint shop. So this is the paint shop. We actually came in the far side and walked this way. So we're right next to the CNC machines are on the other side of this wall. So tell us about paint. Correct. So yeah, this is our paint shop. Our paint guys are amazing, but we've got we've got a fun setup. So we kind of have a mix of automation and manual paint, which you really need in any uh, any shop like us that do both custom things and and production. So so over here, first we've got on this side we've got a couple of manual paint booths. This is where we do our hand spraying. Um, they're great booths. They keep a lot of the the contaminants things out of the air, keep the smell out inside of the booths. We'll talk about this one of these days, but we have what's called a bow tie filter instead of standard paint booth filters. These bow tie filters actually have a larger surface area. So because of that, we don't have to change the filter out as often, which we were changing them out so often it was becoming a, a big chore. And so that's made a big difference um, with what we have uh, time to do every day. So anyway, we have those. Over here, we have our Heesem and Sander. This Heesem and Sander is a super cool machine. Um, this was actually the first sander with planetary heads installed in the united states and so this machine what does that mean so it's not on or i'd sure I, I wish i knew where stuff went in here oh they're on the other side i forgot they moved them <laughs> they used to be on this side back in our other shop but um this has brush heads in it i don't know if you can really see inside of it but i'll grab some brushes and kind of show you but so this has these brush heads in them there's um, I think there's about 80 of these heads or brushes in each head. The heads look like this. This is a wire brush head, but these heads have all these brushes in them and it actually scuffs sands, breaks edges for our finishes. So we can get rid of a lot of hand sanding by using this machine. So over here, uh, we actually mix our own stains. And so this is our stain mix station. So and one of our painters, actually, that, that used to be with us, I'll show you really quick. He developed a, a uh, little program on the iPad here. So we can come in and we can figure out how do we mix paints in here. And we actually have SOPs, so we can say, hey, how do you load a Kremlin pump? So it actually comes to a video, and we can play that. But let's say we need to mix something, so we can come in, click on something, click on, click on the product that we have. What's the weight? So we weigh our products on the scale and then it'll tell us how much catalyst reducer and retarder we need to put inside of that. So we, we get it mixed right. So anyway, that's been a super great, that's honestly, that's just a PowerPoint presentation that's on there, but it's made a huge difference. So it's really quick to train new people on that. So, so there were paint cups over in, your store why so they keep a stock in here basically they keep a stock in here and once their stock gets down to nothing then they'll go grab them out of the paint uh, of the vending machine and refill and to me so. like those look like yes it's messy it's paint but those look relatively clean to me for being in the paint is that by design is this, like the way that you've tried to set up things what has helped because to me like i worked for you in high school and our paint booth then was <laughs> and it's probably mostly my fault but it was disgusting it was not this clean yeah that's what it's it's funny when you when you work in a place every day you don't really realize it but we we get that comment a lot wow everything is so clean and i come out and go man everything is so cluttered and messy right? Mm -hmm. Because you live in it from day to day. But our guys do such a good job of keeping things clean. Yeah, we have some sacrificial boards. There obviously is paint around, but they they keep things clean because when it's clean, it's easier to maintain. It's easier to take care of. 
and we get a better product. Because you do have like the sacrificial cardboard down here. Yep. But like I rent your old building and that paint booth, you could take a, a scraper to it and peel up like five <laughs> years of, of paint from the floor. And this, this, yes, it's messy, but relative to the task at hand, it seems really clean. Yeah. Our guys really pride themselves and in, in keeping things clean. And every day we give our guys every day, we want them to take, you know, 15 to 30 minutes to clean, to maintain, to make an improvement. And they take it to heart. They do that every day. So, so they'll, you, they'll you keep things pay clean. them to clean. We do. Yep. Yep. We do pay them to clean every day. They take pride in it when they do it. And actually work goes faster when things are clean and organized then work goes faster. So one of the other sayings, and I think it's from Paul Akers again, you know, lean is hard work that makes it makes everything else easy. And so that's kind of the way we, you know, our attitude with everything. So, so we say, Hey, let's work hard on lean processes, lean things. And again, we are far from where we want to be, but one step at a time, one small improvement every day. So we got manual painting. We got automated sanding. I'm sure some manual sanding happens as well. Absolutely. What else happens down? Okay, let's come down to this end. So this is our paint line. So this is a Maycor paint line. Um, this, basically, you can send your parts in on a conveyor. This is a photo eye right here. So as the parts go through, it reads the parts. It knows where they are on the conveyor. We've got a sacrificial paper that they run on. And then inside of here, then we have four paint guns that spray. So we've got angles on them so that it gets a good coat on each, um, you know, on every part on, on the edges. There we can see a little bit better. So each one of these spews paint and it's computerized based off of the light bar, the yeah. light bar that determines where, so whether it's on the edge, in the middle, or I'm assuming you can run 50 pieces all kind of like as yep. close. Like, do you have you to can. have... So you can basically, you, we basically try and have about two to three inches in between each piece. And as long as it's not closer than that, you get good edge coat, good face coat. Seems relatively clean in here for spraying paint all day. Yeah, and this has, they clean it every morning. So this has not been cleaned. So it'll get cleaned. Um, today's Friday. It'll get cleaned Monday morning. And then they'll start spraying. So, but we like to make modifications. When I first started buying machines, I was always nervous to make modifications to machines, you know, and this machine used to have like this dual bank of filters, had a filter below that you'd open, you'd open this up. There was, there was a filter down here, kind of at an angle. And then up here, there was like a double filter. And what we were finding is we were, that filter was kind of high in here and over the air from these guns would blow and then it'd pop up, you know, little particles would pop up on our finish. And we were having to change those filters out all the time. So one of the things we did is we just were like, again, I talked about those bow tie filters. We just inserted, I, we cut this, these boards on the CNC, we inserted bow tie filters in, and now we don't have to change our filters. Even, I, I think they're changing them about every two weeks. I'd have to double check with our pain guys where we used to be changing them about every two days. And so it's made a huge difference. So does uh, this move this way or it just only goes back and forth it, right here? It just goes back and forth on this, on this channel here. There's a so it almost route. seems like, in my opinion, they could change this one more frequently or take one of these ones and move it to the middle. Not that they don't do that, but that. It's actually surprising. They, it, the, the, where the spray is actually inside, this is a pressurized booth. So there's fans in the top that put pressure in this booth and create a positive pressure. Mm -hmm. And so it actually forces it pretty evenly across these filters. So cool. But one of the other modifications, I don't know if you can see up on top of the machine, I told you there were fans. So one of the things we found is the machine would get really dirty up in those filters because there's fans, the dust would land straight on them. And so we made a box, put furnace filters on. We opened this machine up to do some maintenance on it a couple of days ago. There was not a speck of dust inside of it. And it used to be, you know, you'd get in there every couple of months and there would be an inch of dust. So again, just a simple modification 
you know, a couple pieces of wood and some furnace filters that cost a dollar or two. Are the and furnace it's, filters on the other side too? Yep. Yep. Dual set. So yeah, the filters inside of that machine, it, it costs about $450 to change those upper filters. And again, those furnace filters are a dollar or two. So by making that, it saves us hundreds and hundreds of dollars every single year by making that top filter bank. So it's been huge. And then I'm assuming this is what actually controls the paint. Yep. So these are all the pumps that pump into the machine. So this is, we use what's called a conversion varnish. And so this is, this is called an echo dose. It's made by Durr. This actually catalyzes the finish. So it's a two part finish, like an automotive type finish. And so all the paint gets catalyzed. There's catalyst in one pump. Then these three pumps are all for paint and the end pump has lacquer thinner and it's for cleaning. And so it's all automated. So on the screen, you can pick your recipe and it'll pull, you know, whether it's paint, primer, clear coat, it'll pull whatever you need, mix it itself. And then when you're done, it'll pull lacquer thinner and clean. Well, I see you've got them labeled. We do. There's yeah. some, some paint sticks. Again, a place for everything, everything in its place. We want to make sure that the things we need are where we need them. So they made a little box, screwed it to the wall for their stir sticks. Pretty simple. So, and this is our buffer area. This is finished items. This is actually pretty crowded. Um, our guy that, that actually goes through, does a quality check and packages things. He's been off for a week. Um, they just, him and his wife just had a baby. So it's a little more, uh, packed than we normally like it, but. What's but yeah. this machine here in the corner? So over there, this is actually a measuring table. You've probably never seen this one. I have not seen it. Yeah. It's, it's probably not on, but oh, it is on. So yeah, this is again, a quality a control. So I'll just put this in right now so we can set this in. Make sure it's square. So I can say, is it out of square? Nope, it's perfectly square. And then I can bring uh, my measures over there. And I know that that shelf is just barely over 15 inches wide by just over 12 inches deep. So, so it helps us measure. So when we have lists, it actually has automated lists in it. So this isn't in a list, these particular things. But you can put a door in them, and it'll actually check off your list. So you can make sure you have everything for the job. So are you guys measuring every piece for every job or we like do. Yep. We double check everything. We want to make sure that uh, the quality is there so that when these go out on the job site, that we know that they're perfect. And that's we, we got this because it's quick, it's quick and easy. Uh, they don't have to use a tape measure. You don't have to know how to read a tape you know, measure. That's true. <laughs> it just tells you what it you tells need. you. That's really cool. Yeah. And did you guys make this or buy it? We bought this. Yep. And then I think your shoebox is the last thing. Yeah, this is an amazing machine. Um, Schubert's, if you go to their website, they're actually manufactured in the United Kingdom. Um, these guys have amazing technology. And th this machine dries our finish. So essentially you put it in. I wouldn't consider it an oven. It's more like a catalytic converter on your car. Um, that it actually will dry the finish kind of from the inside out and pull the fumes and get them out. So when you put a rack of parts in here, you, you stick them in there, you know, they'll be really strong smelling, you know, from the lacquer, you put them in there, it actually burns the smell off. Once you open them, open the doors and they're dry, the smell's gone. Essentially it burns it off inside well, the booth. Like this the, isn't the smell that I can smell right now. That's what goes away by using this. Correct. It's very minimal in here right yeah, now compared not... to, to a lot of paint areas, but yeah, so we can put, we can open the doors. You can see. So inside of here, these, it's got these two, you know, infrared, you know, basically like cat systems and the rays, you know, actually bounce off of these stainless steel walls. They're reflective and it helps dry your, your material. Then it's got fans and it circulates air. So if we want to and paint doors something, on both sides. doors on both sides, we can through, through feed things. But yeah, we can, if we need to recoat something, if we're not flipping it over, we put it on these racks. If it doesn't need to be flipped, 
we can put it in this for about 10 minutes and it's ready to recoat. If we need to flip it, about 30 minutes and we can flip it and the parts won't stick to the rack. So, so a cart will stay in for a certain amount of time depending on the process. Correct. And how, like, do you have any mechanisms on the cart itself so that your guys know where something's at? We used to, but they've gotten so good at lean flowing things that they don't really use that anymore. We used to have, I don't know if you can see these little, like, eggshell timers. Mm -hmm. We used to use those. We'd stick them on the top of the carts, and they would go red, then green when it was time to pull them out. But our guys have just learned to process things. And, again, you know, we make changes when we first, when we first did it. They were great. The timers helped them a lot. Now the guys, they're processing and they know what they're doing. Sometimes they'll, you know, they may set a timer on their watch at times, but for the most part, they kind of know they'll, they know what they've got to process and how much they have to process before they can pull things out. So, and then is that a Kamishi by board? It is a Kamishi by board. I just made one of those for my shop. So what, this is the only one I've seen at yours. Like what's. Yep. So yeah, it looks like it needs to be. Straightened up here. So yeah, this is for cleaning and maintenance on the machines. So gonna straighten those. Yeah, and we just stuck it on here, used magnets. So yeah, it's all the cleaning and stuff that we have to do on a daily and weekly basis. So super nice. The Kamishi by boards work. We've even we were we're even starting to make some that are just in a sauna. So they're not they're still visual, people get in their saunas every day. But they're they're built into the system. It's really nice. So this is the tour of Tyler's print shop. Not print shop. I don't print. Darren prints. <laughs> Wood shop. What is there anything else that we maybe missed or that you think is like super cool or super like maybe someone would get an idea for their business, whatever type of business they have that we maybe didn't cover in this general tour? You know, I think we're going to have a lot of specifics coming up, you know, the way we organize things, you know, using whether it's Kaizen foam or, you know, our, I'll call it our square pegboard that's on our wall. There'll be a lot of things that we'll see kind of more in detail, but I hope you at least got an idea of, of what we do. Some of the things we do, maybe got a few ideas for your shops and hopefully as we get into more specifics, we'll have some great ideas. If you guys have questions, though, leave them down in the comments. That will help us know what videos that you may or may not want us to make because um, that's what we're here for. So we'll get a tour made of my shop and we'll get them. Um, any questions you have, just let us know.